Welcome back to another Old World Exploration. Uh, in this video we're going to have a look at the town of Peoria, Illinois. Um, not much going on in Peoria, to be honest with you, according to our narrative. Um, big on the distillery front. Twelve distilleries existed in Peoria by the end of the 19th century. Uh, but really, um, bare bones going into the, the uh, 20th century. Uh, you have all this agriculture going on here. And uh, let's check the uh, demographics. As we look at the population demographics, we can see uh, not a large city by any means at this point in time. It still isn't, but uh, not a lot of dramatic uh, population growth. Uh, um, like we've seen in other cities as well too but let's have a look at some of the old world buildings of peoria and if you're used to my videos you'll know that what i like to do is point out evidence of what i consider to be the old world um the world that we that is fading away on us or being taken from us i guess you could say um but we see evidence of it all around us and in things like this so obviously the photographs coming from that time period yet we have uh, architecture like this in this city uh, and there's no shortage of these types of uh, dome tops at this period of time um, all over the world but North America is my particular focus and once you begin to see the signs it becomes quite obvious that we're looking at, well, basically, we the, his, the narrative of our history, the timeline of our history, doesn't really allow for a lot of this type of development at that time period. So there's a disconnect between what we believe to be our history and what we're seeing with our eyes, even such simple things, what you might think is simple as the dental molding up here and the details coming down um, the building. You'll see this a lot, uh, especially in these mid-sized cities as well. Um, the focus on um, entertainment, um, places like theaters, um, hippodromes, coliseums, um, very ornate, these places coming right out of the 1800s. Um, so it's suggesting a culture that uh, really appreciates art and you can see that in the uh, architecture is a good example as well and of course uh, the world we live in today we have this uh, um, I don't know the postmodern world I guess you could call it postmodern art is really not art at all in my opinion here we have again you get you can sort of get a sense for what's going on up here this is something you would expect to see um, in places like Austria, maybe France, but we are in Peoria, Illinois. We have the dome up in the middle, and this gives you a good idea of of the texture of these buildings in uh, modern day photographs. So you can get a sense. I don't know. If you can feel that. Uh, here's a good juxtaposition. Here, <laughs> a cube. Here, a cube. This one's got a little bit more of a detail. Got a 45 degree angle, maybe all made of glass. That's pretty fancy for these days, but then you have things like this, which is just symmetrical. Everything, the symmetry involved here is, uh, um, has a different energy to it. I don't know if you can feel that as you're, um, looking at these, uh, photographs, especially the old ones. You see this, these, these are the types of things that definitely get uh, taken off over time. It's just, there's too much, um, evidence of, um, a different different energy I guess you could say for lack of a better term and then we're, we're, I think we're seeing a lot of uh, transitioning a lot of uh, renovation repurposing of existing structures so it is very difficult sometimes to tell where that line is between what was uh, part of an old world civilization and what's been repurposed which was once previously something this is this is a school by the way polytechnic and uh what's being repurposed this again screaming to me of uh old world 
Bavarian type of uh, impact here. This is uh, an opera house. Right, Peoria, Illinois, big on opera, are you? Hmm. Uh, I'd like to know who, the, who built these places. Of course, no shortage of churches with all their different denominations. In my opinion, scooping up the leftovers, um, these locations, these energy hubs, and the repurposing of uh, of the energy of the people, really funneling into a different type of energy. YMCA's, YWCA's always seem to uh, um, be in there as well as old world buildings. You can, you can see it here and remember the time frame what it takes to build the, like this and, and how how many structures there were that fit the bill at first glance this might not be something to jump out at you but you have to look at the details and yeah the stonework the brickwork the weight of the architecture um, the need for things like either massive amounts of, of workers, skilled workers, uh, the need for really um, machinery of some sort that uh, um, we're not being told existed, I, I suspect. Here's a high school, so many of the old high schools, um, repurp repurposed old world buildings, in my opinion. Another school. And of course, you're seeing a lot of uh, um, postcards in this, uh, in this video. It's, it's difficult to find a lot of these in, in photograph form. So, if you find some, that's great. Sometimes I get people come and say, oh, "This is easy to find. That's great. You did some digging. That's good. Thank you." But as I look at these, this is uh, it's all evidence of old world civilization, not the um, wood constructed buildings. That we expect to see at the time especially in this is not a metropolis by any means this is uh what 40 50 000 people we're told uh, at the turn of the century having hotels like this and government buildings like this i did see in one of the write-ups that they mentioned um about the um, distilleries and, and prohibition and how it they gained a lot of wealth through being a supplier of booze uh, during the prohibition period and that was one of the explanations for the architecture that we see every town's got a different explanation or a, a similar explanation as to how the architecture got that way and it's such a weak and thin um, veneer of uh, a story a laughable that's why i can't help but laugh shriner's temple really hmm. who was the contractor YMCA, YWCA, you can see the streets too. We're looking at brick streets with the rail lines. Um, all evidence of uh, what I suggest is the old world uh, infrastructure that existed all over this realm and which, which systematically removed. Um, evidence had to be uh, destroyed. Here's the Colosseum. I know there's probably a few repeats in here. Here's a hospital. Looking very similar, a lot of these buildings. Um, we get the archways. You know, they're just... Once you see it. And of course, the big factories. Right on the water as well, a lot of these old factories. This is a distillery, Hiram Walker. Um, no shortage of these as well. All over North America. Massive, massive, massive factories. Um, probably worth doing a video on the, those alone. Here's the Hippodrome. Again, you get the detail going on in here. Um, not a high resolution photograph, but gives you an idea of the architecture and the attention to detail and the skill level that would be needed. And remember, this is not something um, I would suggest that was there was a there was a very skilled crew that was going around the country building like this. This is happening everywhere all at the same time. So you would have to have a massive legions of, uh, of builders with skill, uh, all trained in a similar style. 
So it's very condescending to say that, well, we're just going to say the architect drew this up and it was built. Okay, that's uh, sloppy as far as I'm concerned. Jefferson Hotel. Again, horse and buggy era, but we have this plonked right down in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. How many stories? Yeah. Who built it? Hmm. Peoria, Illinois. Always found the name interesting. Here we have the inside of the Madison Theater. Of course you have to have a, a Madison Theater such as this in a town like Peoria. Uh, you have to have a painting on the ceiling. No, it's not Sistine Chapel. This is uh, the Madison Theater in Peoria, Illinois. All sorts of detail scrubbed. Here's the National Hotel 1911. Destroyed. You can, it's a bit of a faint skyline. You can see types of buildings that would have existed at the time. You can see these are all brick and they have all this detailing going on. So this is not a time of wooden shacks as we might expect for the time period as we come into the Industrial Revolution and begin to make these types of buildings. Right. This is looking like it's been there a good while. Um, just the part of life, the streetcars. Part of life that had to be eliminated for the modern, the idea of the what we what we have today in the modern world. And even the, the chimneys, you see the flaring and the detail. Ask a um, a bricky to could do a chimney like this for you nowadays, Let, and then find out what they uh, what they quote you at. I think. First thing they'll say is, uh, well, why don't you just do a rectangle? Because we've simplified everything. Everything's been simplified. This is the Palace Theater, not the Madison. This is yet another palace, or another theater called the Palace. Uh, again, you can get a sense for the detail that earns here. Um, is this hexagonal, octagonal, o octagonal ceiling? Um, no doubt all built with the resonance of sound involved. Um, my guess would be there would there were uh, pipe organs uh, somewhere in the vicinity. Here's a good uh, better one of uh, of the palace and getting an idea here of what type of detail even the corners of the buildings looking like columns. Of course have to have a courthouse with a dome. I mean, these things are a dime a dozen. Go to any, look at any county, any county in the United States, and they're all going to have a building like that. And they're spectacular buildings. Here's the life building. You get a sense of the tech up top there. But old, right? See the vehicles here? This is old. This has been standing for some time. First Universalist Church, basements. So they don't all have to be grand and spectacular to be old world. I think so much of it is evidence of the old world. Here's an asylum. That's where they put you when you start to question the narrative. <laughs> That's where they were putting them is what I think. Yeah, they were everywhere and massive, those places. And now it's all about the ghost stories. Asylum ghost stories. It is a ghost story. All of that, a haunting. It's all, all uh, because our past has been hidden from us. There's a fear aspect of what we don't know. We've kept it from us. Uh, that's what's spooky. Once we begin to open up to our true history, in that peeling back the lies, um, that. Uh, that spookiness starts to dissolve. I think then the, the journey becomes more of an adventure. Again, this is a good ju juxtaposition of modern day and old world, uh, where you get a sense for the um, uh, the texture of the building and how well built it is. You got the copper tops, of course, copper, electricity, energy, all tying in with each other. Here's a Presbyterian church. You get that pebbling look here. Um, and of course the perfect archways 
This is very interesting as well. What is it? A chimney connected along the top. Part of the Polytechnic Institute. Clock towers. Yet another school, but here you also get a sense that sort of Bavarian look. What we think of as Bavarian look. There it is again. We saw this in the postcard, but here you see the statues. Right. If, if you didn't know for sure, I, and I told you that this was maybe in Poland or, you know, anywhere in that type of, wor of the wor part of the world, I don't think you'd have any trouble saying, yeah, I could see that. But this is Peoria, Illinois. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you getting, you picking up what I'm putting down? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Hospital. St. Francis Hospital. There's the government building again. 1935 here. And then again you have that the brick structures tied in tight to each other all the way down the main row. At this period of time, the phasing out of the old world, but not completely. Well, still not completely. We remember, so it can never be completely. Towns like Peoria having factories, one, two, three, four, five, six, six story factories with these massive stacks right on the waterfront. I don't know. There's an old saying about the, that dog don't hunt. Sure don't hunt to me. Anyway, I hope you like this exploration of Peoria, Illinois. If so, don't forget to like, share, sub, and thanks for joining me.